738 here, Big 550 KTRS. Kathy Helbig joins us, just like she does every Thursday. This time, she's at a secure bunker working and <laughs> with Cambridge Analytica to get you the best price on your house. That's right. And so right. she is uh, through some telephonic device. Good morning, Kathy Helbig. Satellite phones today. Satellite phones today, good. Um, Hi, Kathy. All right, so uh, cash buyers, we should be thrilled when somebody wants to buy our house for cash, right? You would think, yes, you would think, awesome, I don't have to go through the loan approval process, waiting for loan contingencies, but cash buyers are not always what they're cracked up to be, and they're much harder to vet out since you're actually not dealing with that trusted local, hopefully, lender who has the real look at them on the inside on paper. Right. So when we're dealing with a cash buyer, don't be afraid to ask for questions. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for proof of funds to be able to close the property to the amount of money somewhere in bank accounts or from a financial institution that shows they have the, the money sitting around before you accept the offer because you don't want to have the house tied up while you're finding out that this person is a phony. So I have personally ran across in some form or another the following red flags to look for when you are dealing with someone that is potentially a fraud buyer. Uh-huh. So All right. buyers, buyers that claim they have large transactions out of state that they're waiting to close on to free up the money. So that's, that's a big one that people come in and say, I had one say they were trying to buy a listing of ours that they had two city blocks in San Francisco that they were waiting to close on. And as soon as that closes, then they would be able to bring the money to buy the, the property. We've had um, other people say they have money from a trust fund. So my mom has a $30 million trust fund. I just need to find the property. I need to write the contract. And then I send her the contract and she'll send the money. We've had some that say they're resistant to or are really offended when you ask them for those proof of funds. So that's a big red flag right, right. there. Although there's some quirky rich people out there that are really private about their money, when you are putting down a contract on someone's house and you're asked to provide some sort of proof, if you get all squirrely and offensive about it, then there's, there's usually something up there. I've had online bank statements be made up. So that's another thing is ask for actual phone numbers of you know, the account reps at the banks or the financial planners that you can talk to personally instead of relying on the printed off online bank statements. Be, be on the lookout for offers that are just too good to be true. We've had some that come in and they'll offer way over list price. They want to buy all the furniture in the house. There's no appraisal writers whatsoever. And usually those end up to be too good to be true. Those people disappear. Somebody that's constantly delaying, they don't sign the contract. We, we've had several that they drag the buyers and sellers through, or the agents and the sellers through multiple showings, and then they set appointments to come sign the contracts. And then, of course, there's always some sort of a delay. What's the point of them doing all these things? It sounds like they're just wasting everybody's time, even their own. You know, that's really what it comes down to. There's only been one situation. I've had about seven or eight different fraudulent people like that in my career, and there's really only been one out of those all that had an agenda that the that the buyer was actually dragging the agents down the down the road so long that they were asking to borrow money from the agents to put up for earnest and some of these agents were dumb enough to give them the money and that's the only time that there ever was anything that came out of it that I have seen from the buyer it's really just it's just someone that is out to see how far they can take it and they have nothing else better to do, and they obviously have mental problems. Mm -hmm. Are these typically like people who are investors, or they purport to be out of town? or? So, so in my situations, I've had a multitude of things. I've had, like I said, a, a young man that claimed his mother had a $30 million trust fund, and um, there was some from some sports deal back whenever right. and they just never showed up with the money and he's actually the one that was borrowing money from agents i've had a couple which this one really made me scratch my head because it's not just one person it was two people that were in on it as well that were claiming to be spies for our government <laughs> and that their home burnt down on a government-owned private area so you couldn't check it out and they were waiting for insurance proceeds and of course they they delayed this seller for almost a month, like keeping them on the hook, thinking that they were going to show up with money. And they never did. And every time you tried to contact him, he was, 
on a spy mission using a satellite phone <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we had a, a, somebody claiming to be an up-and-coming um, country singer that was doing a big business deal with somebody in town. They were name-dropping, but, of course, they never dropped their money. And then somebody, that, this recent one, somebody was claiming to be one of the big people behind the investment group bringing in MLS soccer, and they drug uh, a very prominently known person in St. Louis around for almost a month pretending they were going to buy their millions and millions of dollar home, and then it ended up, it was a total fraud. He was waiting on some oil company out of state to close. It, of course, never closed, and as it turned out, the guy lived in Illinois in his mom's basement and, and drove a little beater around and had zero wow. money to his name. So wow. it's crazy, but, but all of the same red flags were there. They always delayed. They never showed up with money, and it was always too good to be true. That's why you uh, call Kathy Helbig, because she will ferret out those troublemakers and bring you only the best. 314-276-SOLD or KathyHelbigGroup.com. How's the market? Still booming? Yeah, the market's super hot. You can't keep a house on, on it right now if you've got it priced right and showing well. So get us into your home so we can get it set up perfectly and do our pre-marketing campaign and your house will sell. Your first phone call is to Kathy Helbig, 314-276-SOLD, and her full team will take care of you. Kathy, have a good day. Thanks for checking in. Bye, Kathy.